Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. Hello, today I am going to discuss a condition very commonly encountered in gynecological OPD, that is leucorrhea. A 27-year-old woman complains of excessive vaginal discharge. This is associated with vulval pruritus. She is not on steroid contraception. What does the patient suffer from? She has excessive vaginal discharge which is called leucorrhea. What are the causes of leucorrhea? The causes of leucorrhea can be physiological or pathological. Physiological causes are during ovulation, what is referred to as ovulation cascade, during premenstrual phase due to congestion, during and after sexual intercourse, during pregnancy due to high levels of estrogen and progesterone, and during puerperium where the discharge is called as lochia. The pathological causes are vaginitis and the three most commonly seen vaginitis are bacterial vaginosis, trichomonas vaginitis and fungal vaginitis. The other pathological causes are sexually transmitted infections, cervicitis, pelvic organ prolapse, foreign body in the vagina and carcinoma of cervix. In the next few slides, I will discuss the three different commonly encountered vaginitis that is bacterial vaginosis, trichomonal vaginitis and fungal vaginitis. Before that, let us have a look at the prevalence of the different types of vaginitis. According to CDC, bacterial vaginosis accounts for 40 to 50 percent of vaginitis cases. Vulvovaginal candidiasis and trichomoniasis account for 20 to 25 percent and 15 to 20 percent of cases respectively. What is the natural defense mechanism which prevents vaginitis in women? The only natural protective mechanism against infection is the acidic environment of the vagina. The pH of vagina during the reproductive years is acidic, range being 4 to 4.5. This is because of the presence in the vagina of lactobacilli called as dodolins bacilli. Dodolins bacilli bring about protective effect in three ways. They ferment glycogen from vaginal cells into lactic acid which prevents growth of infective organisms. Some lactobacilli also produce hydrogen peroxide that is toxic to the anaerobic microflora. Women who carry hydrogen peroxide producing lactobacilli have a low incidence of bacterial vaginosis. Their micropyli adhere to the receptors on the vaginal epithelial cells preventing adherence of potential pathogens. On speculant examination, there are no signs of inflammation and the discharge is thin and grey. What is your diagnosis? The diagnosis is bacterial vaginosis. It was formerly called Gardnerella vaginitis, Haemophilus vaginalis or non-specific vaginitis. Bacterial vaginosis is a disturbance in the microbiological equilibrium wherein the normally predominant dodolin bacilli are outnumbered by non-lactobacillus flora, mostly anaerobes. There are no signs of inflammation. Bacterial vaginosis is a sexually associated disease but not a sexually transmitted disease. In sexually transmitted disease, if you treat the sexual partner, the likelihood of a recurrence is decreased whereas this is not the case with sexually associated disease. In bacterial vaginosis, women's response to treatment and the likelihood of recurrence or relapse is not affected by treatment of the sex partner. The CDC does not classify bacterial vaginosis as a sexually transmitted disease. The common symptoms associated with bacterial vaginosis is vaginal discharge that has a fishy odor. However, it should be noted that 50% of patients are asymptomatic. On speculum examination, there are no signs of inflammation, vaginal pH is greater than 4.5 and the discharge is characteristically homogeneous, thin and grey in colour. Other diagnostic features are a positive whiff test and clue cells on a saline wet mound. Ampsense criteria that are used to diagnose bacterial vaginosis comprise the following. Homogeneous thin 
मिल्की ग्रे डिस्चार्ज टिकिंग टू द वजाइना वजाइनल पी एच ग्रेटर देन फोर पॉइंट फाइव प्रेजेंस ऑफ ट्रू सेल्स विच आर एपिथियल सेल्स ऑन रूज साइटोप्लाजिक मेम्ब्रेन बैक्टीरिया आर एडियर देयर बाय ऑस्क्योरिंग देयर सेल बॉर्डर पॉजिटिव अमाइन ऑफ वेब टेस्ट इज द फिशी ओडर ऑन अल्कलाइजेशन ऑफ वजाइनल सिक्रीशन विद टेन परसेंट के ओ एच के ओ एच मेक्स द फाउल स्मेलिंग अमाइंस फ्यूट्रोसिन एंड कैडेवरिन वोलेटाइल प्रेजेंस ऑफ एटलीस्ट थ्री आउट ऑफ दीज फोर क्राइटेरिया इज डायग्नोस्टिक As seen in this picture the epithelial cells are so heavily covered by bacteria as to obscure the margins these are called true cells patients with bacterial vaginosis have no or few tuberculosis and greater than or equal to 20% of the cells population are true cells on saline wet mount as seen in the picture the gram stain is a definitive test for confirmation of bacterial vaginosis a culture is not recommended It is important to check the pre for presence of bacterial vaginosis in early pregnancy because there is a clear association with preterm premature rupture of membranes preterm birth and postpartum endometritis Stud studies have shown that antepartum treatment of bacterial vaginosis reduces the risk of preterm birth it is unusual for bacterial vaginosis to develop in pregnant women after 16 weeks of gestation Causal relations have also been established between bacterial vaginosis and pelvic inflammatory disease, plasma cell endometritis, postpartum fever, post-hysterectomy vaginal cuff cellulitis, and post-abortion infection. It has been suggested but not proved that bacterial vaginosis is a cofactor for human papilloma virus infection. What about the treatment of bacterial vaginosis? only symptomatic patients should be treated the cdc does not recommend treatment for the sex partners of women with bacterial vaginosis however asymptomatic patients with bacterial vaginosis who are about to undergo either a hysterectomy or abortion can be considered for treatment the general treatment measures include improvement of personal hygiene and use of cotton underwear For specific treatment, the drug of choice is tablet metronidazole, 400 mg twice a day for seven days. Other drugs that can be used are tablet secnidazole, 2 g, that is four tablets, single dose, or clindamycin, 300 mg orally, twice a day for seven days. Local use of clindamycin cream, 2%, one full applicator of 5 g, intravaginally at bedtime for seven days can also be used. Another treatment modality is the use of lactate gel which has a pH of 3.5. 5 ml is inserted into vagina daily for 7 days. This treatment is particularly preferred in pregnancy. However, it should be noted that as per CDC existing data, there is no support for the use of topical agents in pregnancy. Symptomatic pregnant women should be treated because bacterial vaginosis in pregnancy is associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes. Bacterial vaginosis has a recurrence rate of 20 to 40 percent after one month. It may recur when either bacterial vaginosis-associated organisms persist or lactobacillus flora fails to decolonize. Neither yogurt therapy nor oral lactobacillus supplements have been shown to decrease the rate of recurrence. Now let's look at another situation. On speculum examination there are signs of inflammation and the discharge is greenish and frothy what is your diagnosis the diagnosis is trichomonas vaginitis it is a sexually transmitted disease which commonly affects females and males in the ratio of 11 is to 1 it is caused by a pear shaped tetraflagellate motile protozoan called trichomonas vaginalis as seen in the picture The different modes of transmission of trichomonas vaginitis are sexual transmission from husband to wife or between sexual partners the infection passes back and forth between them and this is referred to as ping pong effect it can also be transmitted by communal bathing in swimming pools sharing of dish douche equipment and use of infected persons clothes towels or bath 
Vertical transmission from infected mother to the female child has also been reported. Symptoms include itching and burning besides leucorrhea. On speculum examination, there are signs of inflammation, pH is greater than 5, the discharge is characteristically greenish frothy and the cervix has red spots giving the appearance of strawberry. On a saline wet mount, motile pear-shaped trichomonal organisms and plenty of WC that is pus cells are seen. The picture on the left shows a greenish frothy discharge and the picture on the right shows the characteristic strawberry cervix on speculum examination. This is a hanging drop preparation showing the motile pear shaped organism marked by arrow. Other methods of diagnosis are PASMIR, fixative slide method, where the fixative use is ethanol plus mercury chloride and GEMSA stain. Culture media used are enriched serum triptase agar, Muller's medium or diamond's medium. PCR technology can also be used to diagnose the condition. As far as the treatment goes, the drug of choice is metronidazole 400mg tablet twice a day for 7 days or 200 mg 3 times a day for 7 days or a 2 gram single dose can be given orally or vaginal pessaries 1 at night can be inserted for 7 to 10 days. Tablet Timnazone 2 gram single dose taken with food or tablet Secondazole 2 gram 4 tablet single dose can also be used. Other non-specific drugs used are Clotramazole and Natamycin. Cure rate with metronidazole is 80 to 90 percent. However, about one fourth of the patients who respond have recurrence. On speculum examination, there are no signs of inflammation and the discharge is curdy white. What is your diagnosis? Now I will discuss fungal or monilial vaginitis, also known as vulvovaginal candidiasis. Vulvovaginal candidiasis is one of the most prevalent and obstinate forms of vaginitis. The common causative fungus is Candida albicans. However, it can also be caused by non albicans species like Torpoblis labrata, Candida cruzei, Candida paracelosis, Candida stella tortea, and Candida tropicalis. Factors that predispose to monilial vaginitis are infancy, pregnancy, diabetes, obesity, hypothyroidism, hypoparathyroidism, malnutrition, debilitation, prolonged treatment with antibiotics, steroids, and anti-trichomonal agents. Other predisposing factors are oral pills, Addison's, Addison's disease, pancreatitis, and HIV. The symptoms are intense pruritus, burning, dysuria, besides leucorrhea. Speculum examination will reveal, will reveal signs of intense inflammation. The discharge is characteristically curdy white and pH is less than 4.5. To confirm the diagnosis, the discharge is taken on a slide and a KOH wet mount is prepared. In the wet mount, 10% KOH in saline is added to dissolve epithelial cells and debris. Thin walled yeast like structures, 2 to 4 microns in size, budding cells called as coridia are seen. Spores may also be seen as seen in the picture. The culture media used for diagnosis of monilial vaginitis are Sabarat medium that produces creamy white colonies or Nicholson's medium that will grow the fungi in dark brown or black colonies 1 to 2 mm in diameter. This is a past mirror showing the high pain. General treatment measures are to improve personal hygiene, treat and treat predisposing factors like diabetes, stop antibiotics, steroids, and wear cotton underwear. Specific treatment of vaginal candidiasis is tablet fluconazole given orally. Itraconazole is specially used for non-albicans species. Myconazole 
natamycin, gentian violet 1% are other agents that are used locally. Induction therapy is given to achieve clinical remission and negative vaginal cultures that is complete eradication of yeast from vagina. There are three regimens. Regimen 1 consists of giving tablet fluconazole 150mg on day 1 and day 4. Regimen 2 consists of tablet fluconazole 150mg on day 1, 4 and 7. In the third regimen, regimen tablet fluconazole 150mg is given from day 1 to 5. Maintenance therapy is given to suppress recurrence of vaginal candidiasis. It is to be administered subsequent to induction therapy. In this, one tablet of fluconazole 150mg is given every week for 6 months. The rationale is to maintain levels below MIC. Antifungal effect of fluconazole persists in vaginal secretion for 7 days. This table summarizes the three different types of vaginitis just discussed. In low resource developing countries like India, WHO advocates prescribing a single day course of multiple drugs which are effective in treating all the three common causes of vaginitis that is trichomoniasis, candidiasis and bacterial vaginosis. To avoid cause, no diagnostic tests are done before starting treatment. This is referred to as syndromic management of vaginal discharge. As shown in the packet, three drugs are included. One tablet of fluconazole that may be taken in the morning with or without food, two tablets of onidazole or secnidazole that are to be taken with food to avoid GI side effects and one tablet of azithromycin that may be taken with or without food. The combination therapy should be given to both sexual partners. The drawbacks of syndromic management are that although this treatment is very effective and affordable, it may overtreat simple vaginal infection. Secondly, since the treatment is given to women who come to the clinic, it may not effectively cover asymptomatic women. For further reading on this topic and other topics, refer to the following books by author. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, Questions and Answers Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery